I don't remember if it was Harris or Dave Perfetti, but it was one of them that um, saw it and said, that would be an awesome place to camp and come up and, and hawk in the future. And so we started talking about it after that. And, and then it just led, we communicated over the next year, and then the next year that's where we went and we camped. It spent, you know, like two weeks, and that was the, the, the start of grouse camp. I mean, basically everybody out here has the same sort of nuttiness to be doing this. So, in, in, like I said, they're all brothers. I mean, it's not just, it's not a commitment level. It's not something that you say, I'm going to do this. It's just something you do. It, it's not in the back of your head like, oh, if I, you don't think about it. You just do it. It's, it's, <laughs> there's no second thoughts on this. And to me, that's, that's part of grouse camp is not just hunting grouse, it's the dogs. When you see the dogs working with the birds, and that to me is, is what makes this so special. It's when you catch over your dog or your dog finds a marks a grouse. You're as, almost as proud as your bird catching a grouse when you have a dog pointing a grouse. My name is Jeremy Kessler. I'm out here in a Wyoming, top secret location, can't tell anybody. I uh, had my first flight with a secondhand bird, put him up in some heavy winds. No success, but I was pleased with what he did and as time went on you could see he's learning how to handle the wind, so all in all a good day. And uh, it was over Steve Jones's dog, first really strong point, so an excellent day, as a matter of fact. Bird got in a flight, chased a little bit, did what he can for as old as he is, but that's about it. <laughs> I'm so proud of the dog. I'm Steve Jones, but um, the important one is my old bird, Pinky, 23 years old, still flying, not catching much game, but he's um, still out there trying it. But Astro, he's tucked back in there. The pup is doing awesome, loved it. Held point beautifully. I'm so excited for the future. Actually, it was like 10 years of grouse camp before the bus. Uh, it started off, I had a little 14-foot camper trailer. And Steve Harris brought his teepees. The first year, which would have been 97, which actually is the same year that my, my old bird, my hybrid, and the prairie falcon, that cast I was starting, they were baby birds that year as well. So there's a lot of firsts that year. With the spot we used to camp, but we haven't camped at in years because it's you've got to go down kind of a steep hill and you can get a little camper in there, but yeah, definitely couldn't get the bus in there. Well, I might get it in there. You'd never get it out there, but it's a neat little spot. And of course, his teepees, he could get down there. He'd bring a trailer with the poles. But, but he had three teepees. One was his bedroom, one was his kitchen, and the other was a shower with a toilet in it. And the whole setup, and it's amazing, made it himself too. And then other people kind of got at it over the years and we moved so we could have bigger campers. And I'm a school bus driver for a living. I've done that in addition to the magazine, you know, so I can, you know, like eat. <laughs> and uh, I thought about converting a school bus into a camper because, you know, I've heard of it being done. The, in 2007, our school district was getting some new buses. And one of the ones they were trading in, the old ones going out, was a, a decent bus. I kind of liked it. I'd driven it before and I, it could set for months and always start and I knew about it. And, so I talked to the, the company they were buying the new bus from, and because they used it as a trade-in, and I worked a deal from them to buy it. And so they never had to take possession of whatnot, and got it and brought it home and made it into what it is. The real story right now ties back into all that, and it's with Steve Harris. And his story of even being here this year, because of some, some serious health issues he's got, can't drive anymore. And his sister 
and his brother-in-law, his sister's husband, Mary and Bill, brought him all the way from Texas so he could be here at Grouse Camp. It, it, not an easy thing at all to do. It needs a lot of help. And the fact that he can be here again, he's missed a few years recently, that's, that's more special than any thousands of grouse you could ever, ever have. Jeremy uh, obviously lives there down by him, was apprenticed under him, and knows him better than anybody. But there's this relationship over, you know, 24 years that I've had with him. And, and actually only seen him in person at Grouse Camp. And we haven't managed to get together, he and I, outside of that at all. But as our annual pilgrimage here, and the years that he couldn't make it were really sad. Uh, Grouse Camp was much of a lesser place when he doesn't make it, in the years he, he didn't make it. And so it was so good that he could come, that his, his sister and they, their story of what they've done to get him here, because it, it wasn't an easy task for them to make this happen. It, it's really special. And we got out this morning with Steve and got his bird flown. It, it, it wasn't a, a grand flight or anything like that, but it was very special. The whole thing was amazing. And we all caravan together. We usually split up so everyone could get flown, but everyone went together you know, so to, to see that happen and, and make it happen with him so he could fly his bird. It's a, a generous group of guys that most of us are happier to see our friend do well than to do well ourselves. The objective is to come here and be with friends, we, most of which we only see once a year. And, and camp, you know, there are, our nightly dinners, our communal dinners and all that, that's really more what it's about than the grouse. The grouse are just sort of an excuse. And a lot of fun as well, of course, but that's really not what it's about. It's about the people. I always shed a tear leaving here because this is a, a, a comfortable, happy, you know, the dogs enjoy themselves, the birds enjoy themselves, I enjoy myself. Um, and it's sad to leave something that you love doing. And if I could bring everything that I love here, I don't know if it'd ruin it, um, it'd take the specialness out. But I mean, I look, I look forward to this every year. Um, and it, you know, it, it's, it's just a fulfillment. It it's, uh, fills an empty hole that you had. I, and, I, and I think a lot of people have these empty holes that they never filled. They don't know they have them. But I think that's what people, and I feel sorry for people who don't have this. And it could be anything from music, photography, art, you know, it's not just falconry.